What is up, Clitorati? So we've had many of you submit your boudoir photographs, your incredible testimonials. They've been all over our Instagram wall. And us three clits said that we would do one too. Because boudoir photo shoots encourage you to love and embrace your body and have a new appreciation for yourself just the way you are. Yeah, it's a it's a really great opportunity to take that lingerie that still has the tags on them out or that old, old lingerie that's from high school. That's kind of what I did. And the thing that I love about boudoir shoots is they are for everyone and especially for people who never always wanted to do it, but they never thought that they could like those are the people that we're talking to today. And Bador sessions are for everyday people and they really allow you to be empowered, sexy, glamorous, and beautiful and confident. And I think every woman deserves this unique experience and it doesn't just have to be one time. So if you've done one, you can do it again. <laughs> so I'm really excited. I have a really good old friend of mine who I just did my Bador shoot with, my very first one. Jonathan Mark Hendrick, but I call him Johnny because I've known him forever. I'm going to um, call him Johnny B. Good. Johnny B. Oh, okay. <laughs> or actually, I'm going to call okay. you. I'm going to actually call you Johnny B. Bad today. Uh, ooh, all right. Ooh. <laughs> so I'm going to give a little history of Johnny because he is, was yeah. born in Germany. He's a portrait, conceptual portrait photographer, and his work has recently been featured in the American Society of Media Photography, LA, it, and it was called A World at Home, Connecting Outer Lives and Private Spaces mm. for his project Seven Days Asunder, and he and he, and he has an ND award for conceptual portraiture um, from this year. So he currently resides in Glendale, California. He is married, ladies, and... <laughs> And he lives in Glendale with his wife and son to be very soon, like any day now, right? Yeah. Oh, congratulations! I am in the room right now. Thank you. You're in the nursery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the this is the this is the cl cleanest, most pristine place in the house right now <laughs> because everything else is encrusted with boxes of like baby stuff and yeah. equipment and things that I I still am familiarizing the, myself. With. The final stretch before <laughs> before the, yeah, before the hip yeah. birth. <laughs> Yeah, we had our uh, thing, uh, our appointment yesterday, and the doctor's like, any time now. Wow. So Yeah, so we wanted to snag you to, to hop on this episode now, really fresh. We just did our shoot last week uh, when we're recording mm -hmm. this. So welcome to Clit Talk, Johnny. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we've all been, you know, me, Katie, and Madison, we've always been attracted to this idea of a boudoir shoot. And I remember when mm -hmm. I did mine, I was like, ladies, you have to do this. It's so empowering. And, and before we kind of just jump into our own personal experiences and hear um, how Johnny B. Bad is going to educate us today, we wanted to give you a little history of boudoir for those of you who don't really know what it is. So a boudoir is a woman's private sitting room. Mm -hmm. A place to withdraw to. Historically, it's been for a lady or an upper class woman, like in, in historic times, um, for them to spend time in their bedchamber to bathe, dress, embroider, or to spend time with one's romantic partner. We've all seen Bridgerton, right? The season two is yeah. coming up soon. <laughs> um, I'm very excited. And and then today, you know, boudoir has, um, it's it's edgy, right? Can you imagine like people of Bridgerton actually doing a photo shoot like this? Like it's an edgy thing to do, and it's intimate opportunity to really capture um, all those curves that we have in a more intimate setting. So that's kind of like a brief history on it, um, and and doing it in the privacy of your own home. So I don't know if mine technically was a boudoir shirt because I went, it was a good friend of mine who's a photographer, but I went to her house, but it was still in an intimate home. So I guess it's different than a photography studio. <laughs> Well, Johnny, you talked a lot about like, you know, how people are doing boudoir shoots now and we kind of took the classical route. Can you speak to that? Um, yeah. Uh, well, I, I looked because I had never done a, a boudoir shoot before. But uh, so I had to do a lot of, of research and and looking at like kind of what was out there today and what people were shooting. And it turned out that there was a lot of different uh, takes on what boudoir is from, you know, the, the, the glamour shots kind of stuff that you might see in, and all the way to like a high concept, high artistic uh, realm. And um, 
I was uh, with Katie, I wanted to go into the the latter and try to try to find more of like a story going on and speak to those moments that you might think of when you imagine for yourself uh, your boudoir, your private space, and what could go on in there. And it could swing from something, you know, in, in the fantastical to something that's very, very present in your life at the mm. moment. Mm. Wait, but, so um, let's, I want to go back to the moment where Katie just randomly calls you up and asks you to do a boudoir shoot. What was that moment yeah. like? <laughs> You're like, what? Uh, you, know, you know, it was like that hot, <laughs> that hot wash of being on the spot. You're like, <laughs> yeah. what? Um, um, I was, I was, I was honored, of course, because that, you know, being in, in doing intimate things, um, with, with cameras and lenses and stuff like that, you know, you, you have to trust the person. Mm. It's, it's, it's like a dance and, you know, dancers must trust each other. And, um, w w with Katie and I, we've built such a rapport over the years and over those years had many great deep talks about things. So it was easy for us to get get to that spot and just show up and start riffing on things. Mm. But um, yeah, I mean that was uh, that answer the question. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was texting him because we were doing a we were going to do a follow up shoot from another photo shoot that we did. Um, he did some professional mm. photos for me, and yeah. and I was like, "Have you ever done Bedouin?" Because I put it on my desires roadmap. We have our climax mm. community, and I was okay. making my you know desires roadmap, and I was like this is something that I'm very like kind of uncomfortable, but Johnny and I've known each other for so long. So I could, I told him, I was like, this is something that I like, I'm not going to do if I don't do it right now. And mm. like, I only want to do it with you. So, um, because he's, we've, um, have a long history together. We were acted together for a really long time and that requires yeah. a lot of trust. So there's been a lot of rapport built over the years. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, this... and he did such a he just like fucking brought it. You built two sets for me. We were, mm -hmm. so we're wow. doing a renovation in the back and it's basically a construction zone and he built like he brought all the furniture, like all the conception. Can you talk about that? Like what you did oh. to prepare? I was just so blown away. You made me feel so oh. taken care of. Oh, thank you. Um yeah, I, I just um Let's see. So the spaces are real important, like especially if you're wanting to create um, a vision. You know, um, sometimes uh, the places where you where you want to shoot at aren't ideal for this kind of vision that's coming up to you organically. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, like, because I wanted to go towards this kind of romantic, um, uh, classical kind of like look. You know, something. It was Something kind of like so... old Hollywood vibes almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's a, that's one of my favorite uh, um, genres of photography is like old Hollywood, like uh, yeah. Harrell. You know, he, he's, he's the guy that's, uh, you know, associated with those hard shadows and the dreamy light and everything like that. Mm. So um, I wanted to do that too, because I felt like that was the most uh, eloquent way to approach it especially being one for the first time because I don't really have a style for it because it's, it's not what I do. Yeah. But I do, I do understand light and I do understand what makes me feel inspired when mm. I see pictures and those old old Hollywood uh, movies and things like that with the shadows and things is something I wanted to touch on. So um, I have a few things that I've, accumulate over the years in my own little studio and I built like a little inside of a frame is just all you need to really need to see. And so you have the chair with the upholstery and then the, the drapes and, and um, the light coming through, which makes it really soft and gives it a yeah. mood to it and then add a couple more little, little lights that, you know, pop shadows and things like that. So yeah. Oh, the, no, the photos are sets. beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. They didn't have to be elaborate. Just, they had to just fit in the frame. So right. just outside of the frame of those photos, or like you know, you see the it's the, like a the, construction you know, zone. Floor <laughs> and wires. Yeah. yeah, 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 totally, totally, totally. That's all that matters. Well, I, I think I was telling. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was just telling um, Katie that uh, you know, from in food photography, you do that a lot, and you you have just a little space, but you create these worlds in them. So that philosophy is what I kind of brought to our shoot mm. by building those little sets.
So sure. something I want to ask you, you know, it's, it's interesting, right? So for me, Katie and Madison, we all had a friend, like someone that we felt very comfortable with. Um, for anyone who's mm -hmm. listening, who's wanting to do this and maybe doesn't know a photographer, like, or is a photographer, like, how do you create that intimacy with someone that you maybe aren't friends with? Like for people who are maybe like intimidated to do a shoot like this, do you have any advice to like picking a photographer or how to like create mm -hmm. that comfortability for someone who they maybe don't know as well? Yeah, that's a, that's a very important thing to cover for yourself. I think it's really important to um, have a rapport with someone mm -hmm. and it has to come. You have to, you can't just pop up. I mean, unless you're just this, uh, uh, you know, um, freak extrovert that doesn't care and is going to do whatever they want anyway. And that's how you go about life. And it doesn't matter Well, then that's fine because all, all you need is all that's needed is someone just to show up and, and hit, the, hit the shutter. Mm. But I think, you know, to have that, com that, that confidence in the other person, your, the, your dance partner, um, is to have that trust is you need to sit down with them and actually have a conversation with them mm. and, and looking at their material, you can kind of pick up on what, on, on what they're about to, if you look at their, their picture, their photographs, things, you can kind of judge like, oh, they can, they understand light or they're about this kind of vibe, you know, mm. and then talking to them, you can also get, pick up like kind of the, the, the personal stuff. Like if there's any red flags, is this person creepy or not, you know, yeah. um, you know, things like that are really important. Mm, yeah, because I just know you made Katie so comfortable. And this was something that is like being in a boudoir space is something very intimate to be with someone like they're looking at you through a lens. And it's like, you know, I know yeah. that one of the things for Katie, like, the, I know that you guys really got into some very cool positioning. And she said she was almost like a pretzel at one point. So can you talk to us a little <laughs> bit about like, how to position your body in a way that like, oh, that gives you the desired effect and, or, or like, and how does, mm -hmm. and does it, does it matter what size you are? Like, it does it, or can you make any size body look beautiful? No, you, any size body, it ha, can look great. And, you know, yes, it's very subjective, but in terms of aesthetics and, you know, speaking just from a, like a classical sculptural kind of sense, um, we, Katie and I touched on this too, while we were shooting, is that um, first thing I think about when I'm shooting is that, and I want to communicate to the other person if I'm telling them about the process or uh, of photography, is that uh, the camera has one lens and it sees things very specifically. So we see things in stereo and that changes how we, how we perceive curves and aspects and things mm. like that. So when, when a lens is seeing something, some things have to be kind of, kind of adjusted, you know, so, um, you know, talking about the pretzel, like as, as far as posing is concerned, you know, some of, some of the, some of the things that you kind of want to, you know, think about are angles, creating mm -hmm. angles, um, with your body. And sometimes for the lens, it looks better if you're doing some, you know, a certain way, uh, holding your body in a certain way to accentuate a curve that you want to focus on. Like you have a, if you have a dress that has a, has a design to it, you know, maybe, you know, a more successful picture highlighting that dress, the, the body could be in a, in a completely unnatural position. And, it doesn't uh, look know, unnatural in the photos yeah. though. Like the screen looks that's very the, comfortable. That's what you try for. Yeah. That's yeah. what you hope for. And the one and all the ones that I took that, you know, were total <laughs> not looking, you know, composed that, you know, you never see the light of day. Right. But, you know, <laughs> you're always you're always looking for that one kind of, uh, 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 you know, body position that is that fits in with the composition, the idea. It all it all it all like works should work together mm. to be a part of the 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 mood or the moment, you know, that, that hopefully you're trying to go for. Yeah. So these body positions, um, the triangles of the putting the arm on the hip, you know, kind of away from the body, you can see the inside of the, the rib structure and moving into the hips and things like that, you know, playing with these positions 
mm. is what you're trying for because you can if i if i took a picture of like this straight on you know it's not very flattering right, you know, <laughs> right. But, so so basically but, the more uncomfortable you, know, you, you feel the better it's going to look <laughs> Yeah, and you know, that can be the truth, <laughs> no, but also, kidding. you know, something, some magic, yeah, magic happens. And, yeah. And if if the person is in the moment and um, in that kind of headspace, things can organically happen. And then it's up to the photographer to see that and then capture it. Yeah. yeah, and you talked about statues and how they used to make statues in, in the past and how we were really going for, like, we weren't going to find it. We were actually going to create the moment mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of like finding it, you mm. know, because a lot, right. a lot of times, like when he would take my picture, I just would get to talk and he would find the moments for me. But for this particular shoot, we were like going for a particular mo moment, which you kind of coached me through. So Katie, right. I wanna... Right. So this, Oh, I want to. Oh, I just want to get into like the, the, di the day that you guys had. And I want to, I want to ask Katie, like, what was like the series of emotions that you went through that day from beginning to end? How did it start when it first came time for you to be in a vulnerable place? Like what was going through your mind? Well, I, I just kind of, so the morning I was, um, I realized I had booked my shoot on the day that I was supposed to start my period. <laughs> so Great. I was like healing. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to like, this is perfect. I'm just going to like love my body just the way that it is today. So I wasn't feeling like my like super tight self that day. So that was kind of something that I had to lower the volume on my little bitch and just be like, you know what? My body is healthy. Mm. It's resilient. And um, by the end of it, I think that's what I told you, Johnny. It was like, that's how I felt at the end is so empowered and so grateful for mm. my body. And, um, but I did kind of have that in the beginning. I was like, oh, well, there's nothing I can do about it now. I thought about rescheduling it and, mm. and everything. And I was like, you know what? No, nope, I'm the GPS. My, the great pussy in the sky led me to this date. This is when it worked with everything else in my life. Yeah. And we're, we're doing it. And he had put in so much effort. I was like, I can't cancel on Johnny. So, um, <laughs> so I, I found myself wanting to um, really help him. Because there was so there was like not it's a construction zone where we shot this and I was like is there anything that I can do I found myself really wanting to help mm. and stuff and he's like he kept going no 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 I don't want you to lift a finger like you are the subject today he's right. like I want you to go inside and relax and really be you know in this space um, mm. which was took a minute for me to really kind of do to be honest yeah. So, and what would you say, like, the biggest impact of having him provide that space for you and, like, doing this shoot? Like, what was, what, what, what were you, like, left with at the end of the day? And now looking back on the pictures. Well, now looking back on the pictures, I'm, um, I'm so grateful that it was this date because, um, that morning, like I said, I was supposed to start my period and I didn't. And that was the morning of these pictures is the day that I found out that I'm pregnant with number ah, two. I knew it! Yes, I knew it! Oh, great! You've been waiting to tell us this lie? Yes. Have you been waiting to I tell know. it? <laughs> I knew it! Oh, my God. Um, Congratulations. That's what Thank I kind so of much. felt like That's this amazing. episode so was much. for. Oh, yeah. And... Congratulations. Thank you so much. So it's just like, uh, it was, um, I was so moved by the whole experience because it was, I, I chose this date, like unfolding my desires roadmap and trusting my pussy intuition and being like, this is, this is when it's going to be. And, um, and, and I'm just so grateful for clit talk mm -hmm. and all of this work we're doing and trusting myself um, that, uh, because it felt like really in the beginning, I was like, it's kind of selfish to, for me to do this. Like, why do I need to do this? Like we're paying for so many things right now. Like, and I was like, no, this is for me. And when I found out that that morning I was like, oh, you know, the first time I got pregnant at a sex party with clip talk. And the second time it was like such an intimate, very special thing that I got to do on the day that I found out. Mm. 
And um, and are you gonna I, I do another have pregnancy? That. Are you gonna do a pregnancy boudoir shoot? <laughs> I think you should. I don't know. I think you should. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> I'm sure we'll need pictures for yeah. being pregnant. So, um, so it was a really, really um, magical day, um, and and I really at the at the end of it just felt grateful for how strong my body is and mm. um and to get out of my head and just to really enjoy it i really enjoyed the day and and i had so much trust in johnny because he had me in all these different positions and stuff where i was like just make sure that i look good and there's curves wait and johnny like- did you know she was pregnant at the beginning of the day did she tell you <laughs> Uh, we yeah we talked about that. Okay. But I can't okay, remember so what kn- time of the day it was. <laughs> well, it yeah, was we like, talked about it. Yeah, I was like, just say so he was like one of the first people because you know it was this space, so this really intimate right. space, and I was and I just really wanted to um, kind of revel and revel in the moment, and I really got to do that. Yeah. Oh my god, oh my it, it's god. so. It was I like mean, another I- clit talk activity. <laughs> it's, you know that like had this mm. happens. Go ahead, Lindsay. Or maybe you're just living your pleasure positive life, so there's a lot of overlap with pleasure and life. Yeah. Yep. And fertility. Yep. I'm just so fucking moved by who you are. I've been like, like, like snots coming out of my nose. I'm so like, I'm crying, like muting myself over here. Um, I am so proud for you. I am so inspired by you. And I, I, I think we might we might need to run things by each other of what we say live and not because I like <laughs> just keep crying tears of joy of just because you know you you shared several you know weeks ago you know that you, there was a little frustration around mm-hmm. um you know like the timing you got pregnant so fast last time and and it just really goes to show that like when you put your pleasure first when you own your worthiness like that's the cauldron to cast all the magic, the spells mm-hmm. that you want and all the desires that you have. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank Katie. you. Congratulations. I'm like everything. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations you. on being I know. you. <laughs> I, there was just like so many moments in our meetings where it just wasn't the right time to say it. And then I was like, well, Johnny's coming on. We're talking about the Bedouin shoot. I'm just going to save that little, Aww. little information. I kind of knew that's life. what this, ep- I was like, <laughs> My, like as soon as you said you wanted to do this episode, I was like, "It's because she's pregnant." I like knew it. It's because <laughs> they've been wanting me to do like a catch up on my life, and I was like, "That's so boring. I don't want to do that." <laughs> like, I'm not. I'm not. I don't have multiple lovers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you are gonna have multiple no. children now. <laughs> That's right. Yes. That's right. Mother of two. I know. Oh and how special, okay. like you know, either sex, we just want a healthy baby. Right. But I'm just like imagining like, if it is a girl for you to like show her these pictures and be like, you were inside of me, I guess either gender is fine. Like, but like, I don't know. There's just something about it. It's like her being like, wow, look at how hot my mom was. And I was inside of her. And like, I don't know. I just think it's really special. It was such a feminine experience. And of course we only want a healthy baby, but right. We do, you know, we we would love to have a boy and a girl, so this yeah. would be it. So it would be a really cool thing to be able to show her these pictures. And All right, Clitorati, you know, hop on to our Instagram right now. We're taking bets on whether it's a boy or a girl. No, just kidding. For the record, I want to say I think it's a girl. <laughs> It's a girl. It's a girl. Yeah. I mean, there won't be any baby shower or anything, so we can do it on our Instagram. <laughs> those games there. No Lindsay baby shower. My... I can't throw you another. No, you don't really. Do you not do a baby I mean... shower for baby number two? Is that not how that works? Not <gasps> really. Why not? I don't think so. What if we create a like boudoir space and you have just your women, your sister, like, like a goddess your party there, and everyone? Yeah. No. Johnny, we'll call Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Johnny could put, like we could have photos of just like a goddess like healing space for you. Oh, that would okay. be nice. Okay. <laughs> Make it Jonathan. On a scale from one to ten, how uncomfortable are you, are you right now, Johnny? <laughs> I just, I'm just so, I'm just so honored I've been vetted. 
<laughs> yeah. We're talking about this. <laughs> yeah. I have a question for you, Johnny, about, you know, we, we joked earlier, we, 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 we found out soon early on that you're married, so you're not, you know, you're not an eligible bachelor <laughs> for any of us who do have multiple lovers. Um, we did learn that. So I'm wondering, since you said you, you know, this isn't an area you usually shoot in, did you have to have a conversation with your wife mm. to create a little bit of context for what you were going to do with Katie? Yeah, I told her after I got off the phone, I said, hey, babe, um, I'm going to do a boudoir shoot and I'm going to be looking at a lot, of, a lot of boobs and butts on the computer for the next few days. <laughs> That's what I told her. And what really good you gave her that she yeah, <laughs> But no, we, we have, we, we have, the, okay, we have that kind of candor between each other. We just say silly things. And so, but she yeah. understands we have, we, our, our relationship is built on a, on a, on a pillar of trust. Yeah. And I trust her 100%. And she says she trusts me 100%. So if you were um, my husband, I would trust you yeah. too. There's something about you. Seem you seem like a trust yeah. right? You yeah. have that. <laughs> thank, thank you. Pull you them should. all. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, th we, we've talked about this too. I say, you know, because I have to check in all the time. I think it's important to do that, to check in. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I feel sensitive to an issue, or uh, a concept i want i want i want her to weigh in on it too because i feel this is the way i you know we treat each other as we're one person and it's important to talk to have you know conversations yeah. about everything why not right so um yeah. that this kind of topic is something that uh, i i get immense support from her about mm. and um i that that's just made it very possible for me to go forward and explore it without yeah. any without any worries about you know what's she gonna think or what's anyone gonna think you know i'm sure she's so, gonna be um, like uh, i'm i'm the next one i'm sure i'm sure your wife is like i want a boudoir shoot now <laughs> oh, oh I was yeah I've shot, I've, shot her. I, I've shot pictures by... of her but <laughs> yeah i mean they're not something I was inspired so to ask you to do this shoot because of pictures that you did of her mm. and they're, they're her pregnancy photos and she's in yeah. all this lace and she just looks so beautiful. And I did Thank see you. that on your Instagram and I was like, I wonder if Johnny would do my boudoir shoot. <laughs> there you go. Oh, thank, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like the, the, that kind of thing, which is like the elegant take on things. Is where I kind of wanted would ever want to stay um, mm. with boudoir stuff because boudoir can go straight nude, right? It can go, mm. it can go anywhere because there's no like set rules for what boudoir is now. It's but people regard mm. it more like an intimate kind of uh, sexual sexual place in terms of mm -hmm. like, you know, what I've seen. What I you know. I did photographs. mine with a female photographer and I was nude for some of them, but I would have like a fur wrapped around me. Like you never, I think there were a couple where you saw my nipples, but like, um, I had like stuff wrapped around me. Like I was never like spread eagle or anything. I don't think that's, yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. boudoir. I, I, I mean, I, maybe it is. <laughs> well, I mean, that's like, how, how do you, how do we define things these days? Right. And I was talking to my wife, Lindsay, about this, too. And I was like, where is the line where it goes from, like, you know, if you had a spectrum from from like hustler to playboy, there's a mm -hmm. spectrum there. Right. Mm. And then what would you how do you how where would you fit um, like boudoir stuff into? Because when I think about it, there's a lot of aspects of boudoir in what you would see in playboy because there's mm -hmm. these these sets. And sometimes there's clothing, sometimes there's not, sometimes it's a mixture of things. And, uh, and it seems like the, the, with transparency and people's, um, you know, being more progressive, um, this is redefining this kind of idea of what is vulgarity mm. and what is something that's elegant and, and, and empowering. I would, I, I, I think that is so well said. And I would say like, just like boudoir is if the subject is left like in their pleasure and empowered, it was mm -hmm. a boudoir shoot and they did it for them, like themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could be doing mm -hmm. it for someone else too, but it's like, if it like what you, what it sounds like you really created for Katie was a moment for her to just be in her sensualness. I think that's a boudoir mm -hmm. shoot. Yes, I agree. 100%. And I wanted, I wanted that. 
I wanted that for her too. I wanted to, uh, I feel like the best photos that we got from that shoot was when she was having a moment in her own desires and mm. comfort. Mm. You know, that kind of thing. Instead of me saying, okay, now, you know, push this out or do that. You know, there's, there's no connection there. There's no, especially if the person you're talking, if I was talking to someone like that, I don't think there'd be much room for uh, living in the moment mm. instead of like thinking about where your shoulder is, you know? Right. right. It, like it's really important to stay in the moment. And I think that our best photos were when Katie was in that moment and like, like the one where, we, where you had like an orange slice and we we're mm -hmm. talking about somebody in the room with you and you're looking at them and then you went to another place. It was, that's where, that's where things, that's when I got excited. I was like, Oh, this is it. This is the moment mm. <laughs> she's living it now. And she's not thinking about, you know, her eyes or, or, or head position or anything like that. It's, it's there. It's all there. And then you just had to click the picture. She shot. was, I, and I would say mm. like, that is when people are the most beautiful is when they're just absolutely fully present. Mm -hmm. Just being, mm -hmm. just being, yeah. there's presence. no mind involved. Mm -hmm. The presence is what's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. yes. I had the opportunity to talk to you on the phone, Katie, after the session and you were so in your pleasure and it was after a full day. It wasn't like it was like two hours and you were done. Like you would have thought maybe you would have been exhausted in one world where you do a photo shoot for eight hours that could leave you so depleted and exhausted, but it was like the opposite. You were like energized, revived, totally in your pleasure. I sort of feel like mine wasn't a boudoir shoot because I decided to be uh, very optimized about it and also get business headshots. In the same. <laughs> so I feel like I took away from my own moment mm. by being like, okay, I'm going to get professional shots and I'll get those. Right. Like I, I, I almost outsmarted myself. I don't know. We did commercial I, headshots when we first started and pictures of Cooper. So, but maybe that's fine. the way to start. Did you what, start with the business shots first and then go into the boudoir Madison or was it vice versa? I did end, yeah. I did end in, okay, lingerie, okay, okay. End in my lingerie. Yeah. But uh. there's something to like this space and even your coaching Johnny to Katie of like, I want you to just go be with yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there was something about that that space for the boudoir that it was dedicated to that. So I'm inspired to, to do a new boudoir shoot where it's just boudoir, no professional headshots. So any well, shots and, with sex and toys. I mean, or... you know, if, even for someone who's listening, who's might not be ready to like do be this way in front of them, maybe they don't know a photographer. Like I think like what Johnny pointed to is, is like, you could even set up the automatic timer on your phone and in a camera and at least capture a moment of you just being present. Having that moment captured is like really amazing and just allowing yourself to be free. It could be like a really vulnerable thing to try with yourself and, and then until you're ready to have somebody like Johnny really do this for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming on Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was such it was, a great experience. I'm yeah, sure Katie's yeah. I, I'm so honored to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes. I'm sure Katie's pictures are gonna be all over our Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, damn straight. They're they are. gonna be everywhere. Yes. All are right. you ready for it to be every other I, photo? <laughs> I still have more to edit, I think. Uh I still have yeah, you through, do. So yeah. I'll send you some Katie, more is once there... I get done editing them. Is there anything you'd like to say just to kind of complete this conversation? I'm so glad that I did it. It was something that um, I never would have done if it wasn't for Clit Talk. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it was not a selfish thing. It was something that really made a difference for me. And um, I'm really like proud to have these photos, you know, the, I have them forever. Yeah. So I'm really glad that I got to capture this moment in my life. Yeah. And in this way. Yeah. I think something that I'm going to try on is doing one for every decade of your life. Mm, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. I love mm. that. Right? And then Can I have call? that mm -hmm. when you're 80 years old, you know? Yeah, I'll call you. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's just like every decade of your life. I mean, I've missed like the first two, but whatever. <laughs> no, I guess I got I did it in my 20s. No, I you, do it in my 30s. you have them. I have them for my 20s. Yeah. You would... You were the first one to do one. You were like, like, you have to do it. I think I was like 29. I was like, because it's so, it was so empowering. Yeah. So maybe we'll do a, a montage of our lives every decade. I think could be really cool and, and allow yourself to be in that intimate space 
regardless of age, regardless of what you look like, mm -hmm. and just allow it to be about being present to your pleasure. Yeah. And then Johnny, yeah. if, if anyone if we do if anyone is in Los Angeles and wanted to shoot with you, where can they what's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh through my email. You can you can get in touch with me through my website, uh jam jmhedrick.com or go to my website or go to my Instagram um at j.m.hedrick. You can contact okay. me through there. Awesome. And okay, Katie's great. picture, I know you guys haven't seen them if you're listening, but her pictures look amazing. So if you are in the Los Angeles area, do yourself a favor. Check in with his wife, Lindsay, first, but then book a boudoir session with Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, your wife has an yes. awesome name. <laughs> I should have given her information. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she, she manages the, this aspect of your career now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell her that now. It's like, you're my manager, by the way. We just yeah. figured that oh, out. Oh, that, I think that's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Johnny and Katie. Oh, we have another good time. I know. Thank you. <laughs> I know. It's like October, <laughs> November. Yep. All right. And that works yep. out perfect for us. <laughs> All right. Perfect for us, right in the middle of our sex and empowerment <laughs> exactly. master class. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, Clitorati. With that, we are going to see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.